Well, our Motley crew has landed in Afghanistan and we have been greeted, greeted by the best. But it should be about a quick five minute ride from here. Depending on traffic, we might speed it up a little bit, might slow it down. And just uh, don't open the doors unless told to do so. Like I told you, I was going to come to Afghanistan, and I'm here really where the rubber meets the road. i got to introduce you to somebody. This is the Command Sergeant Major for U.S. Forces in Afghanistan, Sergeant Major Hill. Sergeant Major Hill, thank you so much, sir. It is great to meet you. Great to have you here. Really good to be with you, sir. Now, one of the things we're going to do later on, we're going to get a chance to sit down with Sergeant Major Hill and talk to him about his career, about what he does here. Because, folks, you need to understand, if, if there were the godfather, if you will, of a unit, it's this man. This is the man who has been protecting our treasure, our American treasure. The young men and women that serve as enlisted troops in the military fall under his tutelage and under his control. He's going to take us on a tour, give us an opportunity to see places all over Afghanistan. Jason, again, thank you so much, sir. We're going to talk later. All right. All right. This is what uh, wounded service members will see initially when they get here. And all the equipment that he that's here is standard, what you will find in any level one trauma center back in the States. The only thing that you'll find about this equipment is that it has been ruggedized and modularized, modularized and shrunk to fit here, also on aircraft, because there's limited space on helicopters and on the aircraft when uh, we're moving patients. If you were to drop, Outside this emergency room, I guarantee you, you would get as good, if not better, care than what you would get outside of Baltimore Shop Town. Once they come through the ER, the next the next stop is either they're going down to for specialized studies, either with CT and or they're going to the uh, uh, the operating room. Uh, we have an operating room that is uh, three rooms. We can expand to five beds. Okay. I'm going to introduce you to. Randy Walker, our NCIC here, and she Randy. can tell you all about the great work that they do down here. Hey, you Randy? Good to meet you. Really Good nice to meet you. Man. Thank you. Talk to me for a second. Tell all me right. These are our surgery suites. I don't know how many, how much she has already told you about it. We have three ORs. Room one and room two is capability of running two surgeries at once, something that we accomplished just yesterday. Our surgery suites have been heating up and we've been doing a lot of constant overflow. We do around 300 surgeries a month right now. That is going to double to triple during the summertime. We have 15 surgeons. 15 surgeons. We have approximately seven general surgeons. We have three orthopedic surgeons and we have one each neurologist, ear, nose and throat, eye, urology and vascular. You will get a patient in here mm -hmm. where every one of those disciplines probably have to spend time in the ER together, do they not? Because yes. I've seen some of these guys yes. when they come home. We will have up to six surgeons working on one person Excuse on every extremity. Excuse us. Excuse you. Sorry. Just forward, please. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do have current traumas going on current right now. Oh, okay. Yes, that's why it's just me. Are you sure? <laughs> it, is, it is a full house today. But give them, give them, give them an example. If you want to go look at them, give an example to them. Like, on a, on a day when you have to bring in three or four surgeons, what kind of injury would you be looking at? Glass injury, let's say an IED? Glass injury. Could, potentially take out all limbs, and we'll have to open up from here to here. And I've been back at Walter Reed, seen a couple of patients that obviously came through here, maybe missing one limb, but now that would require orthopedic surgeon to be in, the, in the ER. General surgeon, General surgeon vascular surgeon. surgeon. Generally, uh, if, depending on the I IED blast, IBA is going to protect everything except what's, what's not covering it. And that, that, that leaves a lot of ground uncovered. So you have all four limbs, you'll have neck injuries, facial injuries, eye, craning. It can be bad, it can be really bad. And we will have multiple surgeries running at once in multiple teams. Do you have two operations, two surgeries going at the same time? This one just finished and we're getting ready to put another one in. But there is one in room three, there's one here and there's one here. Now yesterday we had two in here at the same time because we have the capability in both rooms to set up two beds, two anesthesia, and do two patients, two okay. separate things at the same time. So I know for the, the doctor, even Dr. Oz would want to know this. Tell me, in that one room, at the exact same time, what, what were the differences in the two surgeries? Yeah, the, um... Both were, both were washouts, just IED blast type washouts or gunshot wound washouts. Now they were very minimal, 
but if you have other traumas looming, even though these surgeries are a little on the light side, mm -hmm. you still want to knock them out at the exact same time because you don't know what's going through next. Sure, and then you also know the guy who just got minimal damage from, let's say, an IV blast, probably bounce up and land on his head. You don't know if he's got brain trauma. Exactly. Light, right? Exactly. It's, it's a lot to ask, a lot. A lot to there ask is. if you Yeah. Uh, what's the cap? Cool. What happened? Can I ask uh, it? it popped up and blew up me and a couple of the guys. Uh, what? Mortar round or? Uh, it was small arms fire, RPGs. How are we doing? What kind of injury? I just got shrapnel or gunshot wound in my foot, so I lucked out. Lucked out? So you're going to need to stay in theater or you're going to have to go home? I'm trying to, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Told me to, yeah. How long ago? Uh, this was done about two years ago. Two years ago? Oh, this is. PFC Zomer, I'd like to say hello to Brandy Zomer. All right, love you, Mom. Happened yesterday, right? Hi, uh, happened about five hours ago, six hours ago. Is it? And uh, you were in what, you were in the door? Uh, yes, sir, I was in the back of the aircraft when I fell out. I tripped over a roller and took the, took the shortest route down, which definitely ended up not being a safe. How many feet? How far? Six feet. Mm. Break it? I it broke the kneecap and uh fractured my elbow. So. Oh man, well, thank you for your service. Oh thank you. Thank you. Tech Hi. Sergeant Steve Gore, uh, A17 PAS, uh, out of Charleston, South Carolina. I'd like to say hello to my mom and dad in Charleston and also my girlfriend back in Charleston, Cassie.